Hello, I'm Jonathan Bowman Perks, and welcome back to my favorite time of the week. And I am absolutely delighted to have an old friend and colleague of mine, of, mean, of mine, Oliver Johnson. Uh, Oliver and I worked together for many years. And although in theory I was his boss, I learned so much from him. He was somewhat of a mentor to me. And we used to do time to think sessions with each other where we would be the thinking partner for each other and enjoyed uh, learning lots from Nancy Klein. But it was actually Oliver who really got me excited about the concept of inspiring leadership, which has become the basis of the work that I do and that my wife Lee do, uh, and also then gone on to the charity Helping Vulnerable Girls. So Oliver, fantastic having you here on the show. Welcome. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Great to be here. Yeah, and um, you were bold enough to say that not only are you a coach, a facilitator, and a teacher, but you're um, very comfortable with the fact that at 67, which isn't very old these, these days when we live the 100 year life, that this is the chance for you to have a retrospective view over a very interesting life, which we're gonna talk about in, in part mm -hmm. two of the session. Um, what would you like to say about someone who, who's been an inspiring leader to you? Who would you choose? So, you know, I was thinking about this, Jonathan, and there are lots of great leaders that I've been the pleasure to work with um, and to experience and to coach with. Um, but the person I'm going to pick is my grandfather. Now, I only knew him um, because he died when I was, I think, maybe five or six. But I'd always heard the stories that he was a great man. But yet, as a young child, he didn't live in a big house and he didn't have a chain around his neck and he didn't have time. So I always wondered what that was. But my father told me a story um, in 1921. Um, he was working in an engineering company and the company won the, um, the contract to build two miles of new railings around um, the Ormel Park in Belfast, which is like the jewel of the crown in Belfast. He got his men together and he said to them, look, this is more important than we normally do. This is the jewel in the crown of Belfast. We are going to do an exceptional job. Um, and he said, we do this so well that in 100 years' time, the railings will still be standing perfectly straight and perfectly true. Now, my grandfather never got to see whether that came true. My father never got to see that that came true. It's now 97 years, and I drove around past the railings uh, just a couple of days ago, and there they stand perfectly straight and perfectly true. So I hope I get to see them standing straight in three years' time. Wow, Oliver, thank you. That's, that, that's legacy, that's mm -hmm. pride, that's a, a sense of purpose. Um, thinking about, that's a, a very inspiring leader for you, but then inspiring leadership teams. And you've mm -hmm. done a lot of work as coach, facilitator, teacher with teams around the world. Who would you pick as one of your teams that you've seen as inspiring leadership and, and what were the qualities you admired about them? Um, I, well, just last year, I had the opportunity to travel around the world with Concentrix, the, um, uh, the customer services organization, which has got a perfect exponential growth curve. So five years ago, it employed 5,000 people. Then it moved to 15,000, then 25,000, then 125,000, then 250,000, all within five years. Um, and having the pleasure to work with them as they they led the, the initiative to create the culture for the new people joining because they just acquired a company, a huge company, and they wanted to bring them into the culture. And just watching Chris Caldwell and his team as they stayed in complete control of this process. But to do that took incredible courage and a reliance on each other to go, none of us can do this separately. We actually have to do this together mm. and engage. Um, and the final thing was that over a six month period, they all, or most of them, turned up to every event so that they would be seen to be there and do it. And they had the most incredibly busy schedules, but they were able to put that right at the top wow. of their agenda. Really good. Mm. Well, thinking about your work with teams and your facilitation, you, you've been a very inspiring speaker uh, and you always add humor. I, I, I'd love to hear a couple of your stories, which make people chuckle. What would, what would be a couple of little ditties? Because humor is a great way of getting us to learn as well. So what would be your two stories? I've won about 
um, intuitive thinking, and I've I've one which is slightly darker. Uh, but the first one is um, I was I was asked I think it was about nineteen eighty to facilitate a session in Derry or London, Derry in Northern Ireland, and it was about. 2020 vision it's where what's our vision for the city in 2020 so i was asked would i facilitate the session with um on on the political and future of the city which if you imagine at that time was racked with the troubles and it was a very um you could you could cut the atmosphere with a knife as these people from all the different sides were together and i stood up and i knew 30 minutes 30 seconds to grab this event or I would lose it. And I had in my head, my, my, my children were very young, uh, I have twins, and I had in my head that um, I would say something about we're not doing this just for our generation, it's for the future generations. The result of which was that I stood up, I didn't know how to do it, um, I didn't know what I was going to say, and I stood up and I said, do you know, this isn't just for us, this is for our children. I'm very lucky, I'm the father of twins. I got one of each, a Catholic and a Protestant. <laughs> and and you know those you know those tumbleweed moments and then everybody started to laugh and to this day i don't know where that came from but there's something about how our brains work when it needs to yeah uh, the, the second story is a more serious story which is um i worked uh, uh in a consultant and i was a partner and we had two senior partners one was genuinely inspirational and would just breathe life into the place. The other was genuinely expirational, the opposite, which really would suck the life out of the place. And I could never quite realize or believe how he could do it from the car park. He didn't even have to get into the place and he could suck the life out of it. And we were having a conversation one day and um, with the partners and he, he announced to me, he said, you know, the reason I'm a senior partner is, is because I'm just a natural leader and I'm just born to be in a senior position. And I had to summon up um, all my impulse control not to say, yes, but you're crap at it. <laughs> um, and actually, that, thereby lies a mistake as well, because that's what I should have said. Because yeah. I then suffered another two years of, of working in that, in that environment before I actually summoned up the courage to actually tell him what I thought and, and exit appropriately. Yeah, that's marvellous. Well, look, before we finish this first part and go on to Inspiring Leadership Extra, what would be your top tip? for inspiring leadership, practical thing that, that people could take from you and go and, and go and apply it? I think, you know, I think there's a, um, a difference between inspiration and charisma. Charisma is around the cult of the individual. So Elvis had it, Lauren Bacall, the film actress had it, um, Muhammad Ali had it, but I've never met anybody with charisma, um, which is probably good because it's around the cult of the individual. I have to be brilliant and shine in, a, in order for you to be good. Inspiration is much more generous and it's around, uh, it's, it's this sense of going, I can't inspire you, but I can create the conditions in which you find your own inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the tip. Inspirational leaders create the conditions for others to be inspired. Fabulous. Thank you, Oliver, as My always. pleasure. I've been inspired. I look forward to our next session, but congratulations in the, what you call the retrospective view of life and what you're thinking about doing next. But lovely having you on this, on this episode. So thank you for your time. Many thanks, Jonathan.